Hi, welcome. I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Release Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. We have a headliner again, and it's none other than Muragia, and he brings something different to the table that changes the old poster landscape in definitely a good way. And he focused on the psychedelic clockwork orange print that he did with Mondo, and uh, he will tell us about all the little details that he put in. And we tried to uh, interpret in in the uh, Moor Art special his artwork, and uh, he will definitely have some words on that as well. So stay tuned. Head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with what we are talking about or check us out on YouTube. Morgai, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. Finally. Appreciate finally, it. we made it. <laughs> yeah. we, we, tried, we tried yesterday, but we had some technical difficulties. But uh, now it looks all very good. And uh, this is the time. This is the, this is the now, man. You have this very great alternative movie poster for it, Clockwork Orange. I'm just going to put it front and center for everybody to see who has not seen it yet. So many people are flipping out on the internet about it. They love it. They all love it. So um, tell us a little, like the details about it, like the edition size, dimensions, and all the important stuff. <laughs> sure. Well, um, it's an edition of 250, and it's available over on Mondo um, via their Thought Bubble drop. Mm-hmm. And uh, 24 by 36 um i can't remember the number of colors but uh and then there's a variant with a tamil language mm-hmm. title um which is an edition of 125 okay also available on the same area as well that's very cool you, you already mentioned that you did this with mondo I, I was wondering how did you get in touch with them how did it work did they contact you did they or was it you that came up with the idea well they contacted me um for the last six or seven months i've been working on a refined developed style of my artwork and um i think during lockdown i kind of made a switch and and started to make more graphical compositions and brighter flatter colors and nearing the end of those few months i got a i got a contact from mondo and and they got in contact with me and said they loved what i was doing with my personal artworks and um, who did you talk they to? Were looking to collaborate. Did you talk to Eric or Mitch or who was it? I think it was Rob. Oh, Rob. Okay, cool. Yeah. First, yeah, um, and then passed me on to everybody uh, over a Mondo. So it's great. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, this this piece is very packed, but in a good way. Um, how did you uh, how did you start out? Like how how is your process when it comes <laughs> to this? I I because like. Kind of like it's not. It's not like, hey, this is the scene from the movie that's like defining for this movie. How how did you come up with this? Well, I think with a project like Clockwork Orange, you have to, and within the alternative poster art scene, you have to look at some of the great work that's already been produced for the film, mm-hmm. and a lot of the posters focused on a main character or a single element, um, the use of the color orange. Um, and generally that's about it. That's what I had seen before. So my, my approach was to try and do the opposite of that, Mm -hmm. try and fill the poster with amazing details and, um, use a color palette that felt fresh Mm -hmm. to, uh, to an audience. Um, you, you gave me different steps, uh, from, from from your work in progress images. Uh, Is that just Mm -hmm. the layering or what, what is the difference here? Can you walk us through this? Sure. Well, I tend to, um, work kind of uh, how, do, how can i describe it i i tend to just start i don't have a pre-plan i don't have a sketch i just start making um i have an initial idea of what i first want to put down on the page mm-hmm. and then i start to just build from there it's very much a imaginative process rather than having an overall plan to begin with because yeah. it it offers up some new and exciting ways mm-hmm. to develop as you go through the process. Yeah, what what kind of drugs do you take? <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding, of course, but <laughs> but yeah, you 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 know what I'm going. It's, it's very psychedelic, as I mentioned. And like, it's a question. It's a question I get asked a lot when I make my work. Oh, you so do? I, I thought I thought it was a joke on the side for people, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great way to work because you just you start. My I can I can tell you this that the. I used to be an architecture student. I studied architecture oh, okay. right up to 
the final seven years I did worth of training. So I'm a qualified architect. And the mm -hmm. thing that brought my attention was some in Clockwork Orange was some of the architectural elements in the film. Yeah. Um, the main room that the writer is in, uh, Kubrick pans across the living room of his space and there's a checkerboard floor when you enter mm -hmm. that, that room. So there, there was elements that I, I architecturally that I knew I wanted to put in and that's where I start. Oh, okay. If you look at the poster, right in the middle is that architectural mm -hmm. cross section of the living room. Um, so that's where I wanted to begin yeah. basically. And then I just started to build from there. Um, how, how did you like, cause like when you were looking at the first one, um, we didn't have that much, uh, black, uh, fill-ins, uh, and it got more throughout the different versions that you, you gave me. What, what where did you decide or why did you decide to put that or, or, or those layers in, in that way? Well, I guess the, the black that comes into the poster predominantly comes into um, the Droogie's hats, mm -hmm. right? The um, Alex's hat. So that was something that I knew I wanted to put in. And you just have to start playing around with the amount of color and the levels at which mm -hmm. the balance of color, basically. If you start to see a lot of black in one area, yeah. you start to build a lot of brighter color in another area and you keep doing it that way. Yeah. How, how's, how's that for you in terms of like, how, how do you try to, when, you, when, you, when we look at the final uh, version, having so many different colors in there, how do you balance it out? How do you make it feel still normal in that way? It's very much a process of testing. So the black was the last color I applied. Oh, okay, line interesting. Line work was, yeah, I may have sent you a process in which it went line yeah, work black. Then exactly, comes, yeah. But the solid black elements were the last thing to, I put in, basically. So it's very much a way of you try it out, you see if that color works and you see if it doesn't. Um, I had purples and pinks and all sorts of colors in there, mm. but eventually I, I pared it down to the, to the red, green, blue, and yellow mm. uh, that's in there. Why did you pick those colors in particular? Is there a certain reason for it? Yeah, they're actually a reference um, back to the original novel, the book cover, okay. Anthony Burgess' original book cover, which used those colors in a very simplistic uh, way. He drew a characterization of Alex, but in this simple graphical way. And those were the colors that I wanted to call back on, basically. Ah, okay, interesting. And um, yeah, that's uh, that, that's a really cool concept. And how did you pick all the the different elements for the movie? Is there certain like because you like them like those the most, or why did you pick, for example, the 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 naked lady with the milk at the bottom? Like why why did this go sure, in sure. and stuff like that? I could I could definitely dissect the entire thing for you, but I'll def I'll I'll tell you about the the naked lady. I guess those are the the milk yeah. maids, right mm -hmm. from the scene, and they offer. I thought about having flowing milk everywhere. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, they could be a great framing device for how the milk flows at the bottom of the piece. And um, obviously the, the the last scene of the movie is is placed center into, into a giant eye, basically, which is, it's all part of the, um, the mental state that Alex goes mm -hmm. through throughout the beginning of the film. It's, it was how I wanted to, put, to approach the, uh, the poster. Mm -hmm. That's that's really interesting. And like, uh, is, is there something in the like, for example, the the, the background? You have like this. We have circles going on. We have triangles, different kinds of shapes. Is there uh, is that all related to the movie, or am I just should I rewatch it to see all of that? <laughs> no, I would say the the pattern work and the and the shapes and the circles and all of that stuff that's in the background. Mm -hmm. It's not in the movie, but it's very much a part of what is what I assume is going on in Alex's head mm -hmm. during certain po moments of the film. It's, it's a Kubrick has a way of creating these transient elements mm -hmm. that happen to you when you're watching the film, you very much get kind of sucked into the films you're watching when you're watching his movies. So yeah. it, it was my way of trying to incorporate that into the poster. Yeah. Uh, how, how did you, by the way, get away with uh, putting a penis in there? <laughs> Um, I actually thought I would, that was going to get cut. I was, <laughs> I was showing my girlfriend the image and, and I was, I, I very much said, well, that's going to get cut. We're not going to, that's probably not going to go, but yeah, they, they didn't say anything. It just went through and it came through. Maybe they missed it. I, exactly. <laughs> Maybe there's too much going on. Okay. We're going to, yeah, we didn't see that, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like it. But it's a, it, it's a very important thing mm -hmm. that happens in it the is. film. It's the first time Alex actually murders somebody with that device and, and 
the moment it happens, there is this kind of energy that comes off. It's a flashing mm -hmm. set of images. So the pattern work behind that element is also part of it. It's it is a well thought out poster, even though it feels mm. very natural and my process is very natural. Yeah. That it is all kind of specifically chosen. How, how long did it take you to, to like, or how how long in general does it take to make this kind of style? The posters, because I, once again the way I work is very fluid. I try and do the posters within a few days, okay. basically a week maximum. I would say, if it takes longer than that. I start to second guess myself. I start to okay. question what well, the elements I put in. So it's very much this ball of energy that happens when making these these images. Okay, that's cool. And um, the 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 variant, the the, the Tamil variant, is um, also very interesting. Is is it just? Uh, did you just put that in for you, or did did did, did uh, Mondo ask for that specifically? Mondo actually asked for it because I was using a lot of Tamil language in my personal yeah. artworks. I'm a, I'm a kind of Western-born person with a heritage from Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. and my personal works is, is a mixture, a juxtaposition of my upbringing with my Sri Lankan roots. Mm -hmm. So I, when Mondo asked me, I, I thought it was a really cool idea because... Sri Lankan people need movie posters too, you know. <laughs> yes, indeed, that's very, it's very true. Um, and will there be a piece in the future f of this print, is, or is is that a plan? And do you have any idea when when you're going to put them out? Yeah, there are APs. I haven't um, had any clarification as to when they're coming uh, over here to the UK. So as soon as they do, I will um, I'll make some announcements and, and we'll get them up, you know, for people to buy. Perfect. Yes, we'll definitely uh, definitely go up and then I will make it make it available for the viewers here as well. And uh, before we're gonna go, I wanted you to ask um, to give us a short movie review of Clockwork Orange and. Uh, Oh. What what did you like? What didn't you like? And how would you rate the movie in the end? You wrote something down. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, I actually wrote a piece of writing to go along with the film. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just gonna find it here now. Sure. What, what, so like what, what kind of what kind of writing? What are we talking about? Well, Mondo actually asked me. To, oh, that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. What, I, I know what they, they do. They asked me to to provide a piece of writing on the film, and uh, I I've. I thought it would be a good time to read it just because it, it's almost a review of the film oh, itself, okay. you see. So let me see if I can find it now. Is it, is it already on the, uh, on the website? I don't think it's on the website, but it is on my Instagram. So I can see if I can find it. It's, uh, it might be a, just give me a sure, second. Sure, yeah, no, don't worry. We, we, we got some time. I'll, I'll, I'll just keep talking while you're looking, so... Okay. <laughs> this is how we do it, and yeah, this is this this drop is happening tonight, right? Or was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's tonight, right. tonight means the uh, Friday thirteenth. It's like almost like a Hel Halloween part two drop. <laughs> when you look at <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's it. It's it's cool that it was done for Halloween as well. That was that was fun. Yeah, uh, and it will be yeah I'm, I'm, for the people that are gonna watch this because it's gonna come out next week on Wednesday. Um, yeah, you will probably have one or you will, you won't, but there will be a piece as we mentioned, um, earlier and, um, yeah, this, I, I just, I've just found the blog post on the side there, but it doesn't say, it doesn't say anything about the idea or does it? I'm still looking, but it doesn't. Um, let me just get it on Instagram because that's probably the easiest place to find it because I wrote it down. Sure. Uh, in my Instagram. Yeah, by the way, Instagram people, you saw it earlier, underscore Muragi, uh, Murugia. You will find them on there, but obviously it's tagged also, so you can go look at okay, it. Okay, I've got the, you uh, got it? I've got the piece of writing. Okay, right. there you go. Then let, let's hear it. I'll give you the stage. <laughs> <laughs> How art thou, thou globby bottle of cheap, stinking chip oil? A clockwork orange, something organic, made to work mechanically. The film is about one's deepest instincts and their own human nature. It is posting that we are an aggressive species. Alex DeLarge's feral nature and psychopathy is where I wanted to go with this poster, via a color palette that feels novel. 
creating a mechanical framework housing motifs and details from Kubrick's disturbing and masterful picture. Kubrick's way of distorting space blends effortlessly with the subject matter and nadsat of Anthony Berger's novel, which is another way of how I wanted to journey through the project. And by the end, I was cured all right. All righty. That's, 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 that's a good one. I like this one. And, but, but what is your favorite moment from the movie in this case? What would you say? The favorite moment, it kind of, oh, that's a difficult one. I <laughs> figured. One. Well, like what? I, this, this is why I kind of prepare a amount of writing. Because it's, it's, <laughs> but, it's easier. Oh, yeah, sure. Of... But, but what pops in your head right away? That's, let's, let's take that. I'd say the first thing that pops into my head is easily the opening scene of the movie. It's the, it's the eye, it's the moment you notice that deranged look in Alex's face, mm. even though he's in a calming, or it, the, the scene is portrayed as this kind of like long calming scene. Mm. But um, you can see the Alex's eye is, is the one that you see, first of all. And the opening movie is, the opening half of the movie is a whirlwind of energy And then Kubrick manages to bring everything back again, but from a different point of view. It's it's a, mm. it's a it's an amazing film. Yeah. So how would you rate the movie from zero to ten? Oh, it's a ten out of ten. There you go. Easy, <laughs> easy. Easy. By the way, um, uh, that's that's what I wanted to ask earlier. Did did you go to the uh, Kubrick uh, con uh, exhibition at the Design Museum? Oh, I haven't. I didn't go to it. Um, but Kubrick's archives, I think, are in london right i think they're held here in the uk so i'm sure that exhibition will come around again so yeah I, i'll definitely was, be first in london. it was really cool at the design museum I, i was actually in london that day with like uh or that uh, for, oh, for wow. a week with my uh with my class we had a, we had a uh, school trip and i went with one of my students he he uh, he, he turned actor he's an actor now And he, he's oh, going to cool. have his full, uh, first full feature movie coming out uh, December 3rd, I think it is. And so, yeah, oh, and wow. he, That's he loved it. He, what, what film is he going to be in? Is it something that we are all it's a, able it's to a, see? Yeah, it's, it's a book. I think there's going to be, um, um, it's an adapted book and from uh, Israeli... I think he's Israeli. Yeah, he's some Israeli dude, and uh, he. Th this actually happened. So true story stuff, and it's about like uh, this 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 boy actually born Jewish, and uh, like he's but he's pretending because he looks kind of like Arabic, and he's like pretending with his friends to be uh, a Muslim, and then yeah, this gets him into trouble, and I think there's I I don't know if there's going to be like an I don't I don't think is uh, if anybody's going to dub it, but I think there's going to be a subtitled version, at some point. Cool. I'll keep an eye out. You've got to let me know about that one. Sure. But yeah, the Kubrick exhibition, how was it? It was great. I, I loved every every second of it. They had like the Saul Bass stuff going on in terms of posters. They had all the cool props there. And yeah, everything from nice. Shining to uh, uh, um, like a full part on for Clockwork Orange. A little, like all wow. his uh, all his movies were in there. It's like really, really fun to say his conversations, like his beginnings and like uh, like tiny set pieces. And they had set cards and stuff like that from like from the films. So that was like really cool to see. That's really cool. I hope one day our posters can be a part of that exhibition. Yeah, that would be, that would be, that would be amazing <laughs> if, that, if that would happen. Awesome. Yeah. I, I got my fingers crossed, man, that this will happen to you because, um, hey, keep coming up with all this uh, great artwork. I love to see it. And I think people are tired of the old ways. So something totally new uh, is definitely in order. And um, yeah, thank you for coming on to the podcast, talking about your great piece. So uh, good luck that it will sell out. But I have no doubt that <laughs> it will be. Fingers crossed it does. I hope I hope it sells. Uh, I really appreciate The opportunity to work on these amazing film projects so yeah we, we i'm excited for the future we will know by tonight or or when the podcast comes out i will i will i will mention that of course and um yeah uh thank you again for coming on and um yeah now on to the other releases okay so we talked to Murugaya and uh That was a very cool headliner, very something something very different that we haven't had before. But I hope you really enjoyed it, and I hope uh, some some of you bought it. So it would be great to see a couple pictures on the wall of somebody's house and what it feels like to have it on the wall in a certain frame and a certain mat. That would be really cool to look at. But we also have some more cool releases, and as you can see here, this is the overview of what I will talk about today. And our first one is going to to be this. Killian Ang piece. It is uh, the Fellowship of the Ring, as you can see. 
And this piece is a private commission screen print and it's a regular and a variant color version. Looking very cool and uh, it comes with a typical Killian Ang style. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a masterpiece for a lot of people out there. And I have to say, it's not his best. I really love his Galactus. That's my favorite piece he ever did. But I also love the next one we're going to talk about, which is also by him. And this is this Jason and Argonauts piece. Jason and Argonauts, the, the, the Greek mythology saga, is one of my favorites. Um, and I really love this movie to death. And I loved or love this print. And uh, it's a 12 color screen print, 24 by 36 inches. It was a hand number edition, edition of 185 for the regular version. And um, this is distributed via bottleneck and Ish, um, the Ish Gallery, Justin Ishmael, uh, which is also very, very cool. And there's also a variant for that, uh, which is a print, a 12 color screen print on gold foil paper, also 24 by six, uh, 36 inches, an edition of 100. Very cool piece, very cool to look at. I love, love this, this kind of style. But another very cool print that we are going to look at is this one. And this one is a 12 by 36 inch print by Lyndon Willoughby. It's a DB5 Chase. It is uh, obviously James Bond stuff. And uh, you can see the gold there looking at the cars. It's like really, really cool idea with the, uh, you know, the, the, from the, like the dirt that gets, that's get up, the, this kind of dust that is uh, like thrown up by the car, by the tires. Looking really cool, very cool idea. Probably amazing on the wall. Um, yeah, Lyndon, great job again. There's a hand number edition 150 over at Bottleneck. And um, yeah, definitely a must buy in my book. Um, also by Bottleneck, uh, it just came out an, like an old friend of the show, Carl Fitzgerald. I still want to get him on. I hope, uh, Carl, if you see this, man, I hope you have some time because we talked before, but he wasn't uh, or hadn't had time yet to do this, but maybe in the future will be, but Pond's Labyrinth prints, print looks amazing. Um, this is the regular edition, uh, hand numbered of 100, 24 by 36 inches of screen print, and this is the uh, variant, which was only available 50 times. But I think I love the um, or no, never mind. I, I can't really tell. I think this one, the variant is very cool in terms of the earthy tones. Um, yeah, great, great job. Then I'm um, moving over to the Mondo pieces that we're going to take a closer look at. And it's this one, Scoob by none other than Matt Taylor. Artwork was uh, finally done. He did this before. Um, and it's a 36 by 24 inch edition um, of hot 250. And it's done by DL Screen Printing for Mondo, as I said. Very colorful, very uh, um, Scoob style uh, on here. But didn't like the, the movie, really. But uh, the print looks very awesome in the typical style. But I love even the variant of this even more with, the, with those more warm colors here. Um, it is, the variant edition is uh, the same size. And it's available, or was available 125 five times. I think you can still get it over at um, at the at, at Mondo. So head over there and check it out. It's still available to buy. And also available is this wonderful uh, Kiko Sternberger possessor print. She will be on the podcast uh, December 9th. I think that's when the release will happen. And this piece is just amazing. Look look at the details on here. With the, with the dots she put everywhere. Got, got the face perfectly right. Love the colorways. This black and the red. Amazing piece. And people, don't sleep on it. It's still available. For everybody who doesn't know her, who, who don't know her, um, Akiko is a renowned key art um, master. She is incredible in what she does and check out the interview when it comes out December 9th, but it's definitely worth buying her one of her prints. Uh, she's maybe not known in our turn of movie poster scene or in a printing scene, but she will she will be there. Her ideas are incredible and this piece, I really love the way that the face is um, presented here. And it's a different one in, in terms of color and of style uh, when you ha when you compare it to the Randy Ortiz piece we had a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, this Possessor one and the movie also really great. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. It's uh, uh, the, the, the Cronenberg at its finest. Or oh, a Cronenberg, I have to say. <laughs> but yeah, really cool piece. So check it out. Definitely worth a look here uh, on this one. Yeah, and this was this is it for Mondo, um, but I have some more bottleneck co-releases co -releases with Vice Press. So check this one out. And this one is by Flory. Flory 
did this wonderful Jaws piece. It's amazing. This, uh, this piece is incredible. Really love it. Had to get it. We talked about it on the old Vice Press Open channel. So check that out as well. Uh, Dolly, talk, uh, Dolly, I'm sorry. Um, um, Flory talked about it in detail. And yeah, it's been a, been a great time. So also subscribe to the Vice Press uh, uh, Open channel uh, YouTube page. It's definitely worth uh, to stay tuned with uh, over there because we're going to have some more live events in the future. And I think it's definitely worth your time. But also the variant edition looks really amazing. It's just incredible what what uh, what he did there. This, the, this, I love the perspective, like this half underwater, half on top, and the color is always amazing. And yeah, perfect Jaws piece in my opinion. And um, a new take on, on the matter. Also released uh, through Chris Weston, which I didn't know that he was um, that he was so uh, like like that he was like he was doing like Star Wars stuff in terms of designing characters, uh, for example. But Chris Weston, he's 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 working a lot of movies and he's doing also this incredible, incredible um, pieces. And this is also 24 by 36 inches, and there the, the regular version was 175 times available. And the um, this version, the variant, was available 125 times and was printed by VG Kids. By the way, the, the Flory one, I forgot to forgot to talk about that one. Uh, it's 24 by 36 inches, 200 in regular, 100 in a variant, and printed by White Duck, who was also uh, they were also available. So White Duck, shout out to you guys for doing such cool prints. Uh, they they were on the open channel at least in the chat, and we had some good times. Yeah, talked about them as well, and. Then, we have some more prints, and they are uh, by Nan Lawson. And Nan Lawson, I got familiar with her a couple of weeks back, and she does some very beautiful styles. And these are for the Vice Press editions, uh, the open edition ones. It's a lithograph print, and yeah, this this one is for Back to the Future. It's 12 by 16 inches, very cool looking, like this kind of like warm, cozy, cuddly colors. Love it. And she also did a Jaws one, which you can like fall in love with the sunset. Got the orca in the back there, so looking really cool. Uh, yeah, some some interesting uh, ideas here, uh, which makes or, like shows Jaw in a different light. Also, um, she did this beautiful Jurassic Park piece. Love the colors in this one, the way that the, the, the forest is recreated here. You got the main characters in the front there, the, the Brachiosaurus in the back really really cool and incredible stuff um from the guys over at vice press and um this is i think this was a vice press exclusive and um we have also a vice press bo bottleneck co-release with the next piece which is incredible incredible this one is dune by matt griffin 24 by 36 inches 200 in a rag 100 in a variant edition and a couple of locations came over and it was screen printed by end hymns i don't know about them but um very, uh, very, very incredible print. I I can't wait to see it in hand. He uh, Matt posted already on his in, on his Facebook group, uh, like a like a printed version of it and like a little video, and it looks just incredible. The regular has gold metallic inks, which is unbelievable, and this one is the the variant and is available hundred times, and it has silver metallic ink. Uh, that that's. Just incredible, incredible work, incredible concept. Um, yeah, it sold out in seconds. So um, yeah, that's just amazing, amazing stuff uh, by Vice Press and Bottleneck, what they put out. Another really cool one is um, not really Vice Press, but it's Matt Ferguson. And he uh, came out with this die cast ornament for the unicorn, which is like his kind of mascot and his take on this Blade Runner, a Blade Runner esque um, um, object. Let's call it object. Yeah, and it was available um, in addition size of five hundred, and it was on sale on the Vice Press Open Channel. We talked about it there as well, and yeah, just incredible. It comes with a little like certificate of uh, authentication, like which is like at the bottom looks like a pin. Really cool stuff, and yeah this incredible, incredible release uh, day for Vice Press Matt Ferguson and Flory. So check that out, people. It's definitely worth it. If you can get the chance in an aftermarket grabbing one of these, they're definitely, definitely uh, very cool to look at. Then we have this piece by... Um, Again, Matt Taylor, and he did this, uh, I think it was a cover for uh, anniversary, I don't know which year, but anniversary uh, for Green Lantern, and this Green Lantern piece 
looks very cool. Love the colorways there and screen printed. And uh, it is um, not for Mondo this time. It is made for Uniquely Geekly, which is uh, run by Benbo. And he is a very cool guy. So check out his store. Very cool stuff. He does, um, he does work together uh, like with different artists for the APs and the shipping services, uh, especially in, in that regard, but also has his, his own kind of store. So uh, support is always appreciated, but check it out. He has some really, really cool pieces, which are definitely worth looking at and getting at. And yeah, um, one of them, like one of, one of his clients is Jock, for example, and the other is Ali Moss. So uh, you know when you come to the store, what's up? And obviously Matt Taylor's in there. So yeah, check check out Bembo and uh, yeah, check out this Green Lantern piece. I think it was available 125 times, but I'm not sure. And it's a edition of, I don't know, uh, uh, size-wise, uh, I think it was 18 by 24, but I'm not sure. Maybe it was even bigger. Um, didn't say in the newsletter there. Um, also, the another um, print that came out with somebody else that we are like like looking at, uh, and it's this incredible looking alien piece by um, Paolo Rivera, and the, there's a like a limited edition a print which was available 375 times. And it's a print on paper, and then there's a limited edition of 100, which is the print on canvas. Uh, very interesting to see. Very cool concept with all like the like the pods and like the, the all like what's what's happening to the people there. A very cool look at Alien and a very incredible piece, um, which is the. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and this one is by Dave Merrill, and he had a couple of APs uh, up for grabs, I don't know if they're still available, but you can check them on his Instagram, uh, Dave Merrill Art, I think it was, um, and yeah, check it if it's available, I mean, it's a it's a classic, and especially for an Americans, um, definitely a classic <laughs> in terms of movies, so uh, a little bit when like those different titles get also movie treatments and yeah check uh, check checking in with him uh, in with him for uh, the uh, APs that he did for this private commission. And another different take on a movie we all know is this one here, and um, it was AMP of the week I think it was, or was it month even AMP of the week by uh, alternative movie posters. And this one is by Chris Kohler. He did the Back to the Future, as you can see. And I love the way that, like, they, like, this archa archaeological take on the movie in terms of time. And I think that's a really cool concept. And uh, this piece was done for Designer Con. And, uh, yeah, it turned out really well. If you, if you could have grabbed the piece at Designer Con, I think that's definitely worth it to put it on the wall. Even though... A little spooky, scary-ish with the skeleton, of course, but I think it looks really amazing. Then our next piece is um, a poster you cannot get yet. Maybe it will be done in some other way, but it's this piece for The Hobbit by Bella Grace, and she did this in a commission for um, Prime Video, um, Amazon Prime Video, and it looks really cool to me. I love it, the way of the... the, the the pipe when he smokes and the, the 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 dragon comes up in this way and love the colorways on there very artsy very uh, feels like very brushed and I think that's a really cool look for a poster and yeah that's if if you if you get can get your hands on it it's not only digital that would be cool to see uh, on a wall somewhere I think for all the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings fans it's definitely a, a must have I think it just looks incredible. And our last piece that we're going to talk about this week is by SG Posters. And it's just a digital um, version of a poster, but this poster also looks amazing. It's for the upcoming movie Mank coming out on my birthday. So I'm really happy to watch that on my birthday. And uh, yeah, Gary Oldman in Mank will probably be incredible. So uh, is this poster and love the way how it is with like the way of the writer, you know, how, how it's made. And um, like how Citizen Kane is made, basically in this in this way, and um, yeah, love love the black and white, of course, because the movie is in black and white, and I think that's definitely a, a piece that should Netflix like consider putting it on their website and like or on 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 um, on the streaming service, having it like on the on the um, UI of the of the Netflix app. That would be very cool to see. It's definitely worth it, and uh, yeah, maybe we get lucky, and uh, Eileen is going to do some prints for that, so um, let's stay tuned. If, if it's happened, I will let you know, but very cool digital print, and yeah, 
This is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it was like short and sweet, but we have a very cool headliner. We talked about this beautiful Clockwork Orange piece by Murgaya, and yeah, it's definitely worth uh, to to uh, to check in on that, uh, what the process is behind this piece, because you will guess and you will puzzle uh, how this is made. And um, yeah, it's definitely worth uh, to check out. Okay, people. Next week, we will have... I, I don't even remember who we have, but I think December is going to be Akiko. I know that for sure. But Matt Taylor is coming up. I think it's Matt Taylor next week. So stay tuned for that. Matt Taylor's interview, longer interview, is going to happen, people. So check it out. I will talk to you soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.